The devastating heat of an atomic bomb is a horrible thing to witness. Human beings within the blast radius can be vaporized in an instant, their mortal remains reduced to nothing but ash within a mere moment. Those on the outskirts of the shockwave may be safe from the immediate explosion, but may not wish they had been. As radiation seeps through their body, they begin to succumb to its poison. Their organs begin to shut down, their bodies begin to fall to pieces, and they die, coughing up their own blood. This is not the case for all residents of the wasteland, however. For some, the radiation has an entirely different effect on their bodies. These unfortunate individuals go through a process called ghoulification. They do still degrade. Their skin begins to slough off, leaving open wounds displaying exposed muscle and in some serious cases organs and bones. Their hair follicles fall out, leaving them as bald as a particularly ugly newborn baby. Their vocal cords are exceptionally damaged, causing them to speak in a parched, raspy voice that is seen as their key characteristic of their people. Ultimately, these individuals, now known as ghouls, look like walking corpses, necrotic, essentially suffering from leprosy, yet still alive. Due to their mutations, namely the gamma radiation that disrupts the normal process of decay in their bodies, ghouls can live for an exceptionally long time and are essentially immortal. But it unfortunately is not all sunshine and roses for the ghouls. Although many ghouls retain their faculties and intelligence, many unfortunately do not. Categorized as a feral ghoul, these beings essentially become the slur that many wastelanders give the ghouls. A zombie. They lose all higher cognitive function, seeking only to feed upon and kill all organic beings that come across their path. Given the fact that many normal ghouls have degenerated into feral ghouls, they are shunned by wasteland communities who believe that all ghouls are simply a walking time bomb before they turn feral. This raises the question, are these wastelanders simply racist bigots or pragmatic realists? Will all ghouls turn feral eventually? In our analysis of what turns a ghoul feral, it seems to boil down to a combination of either isolation, radiation and or genetics. One of the only wasteland doctors to study the feral condition is Dr. Barrows, located in Underworld. Dr. Barrows has labelled the condition suffered by feral ghouls as ferocious post-necrotic dystrophy. In his reports, he writes, the degeneration into a feral state is not fully understood. It is known that it is a result of degeneration of the brain, which is not affected by the regenerative mutation of the spinal cord and emerges following the atrophy of higher brain functions, accompanied by an increased level of aggression and appetite. When the loss of capacity of thought is complete, a ghoul is considered feral. It remains unclear exactly what precipitates this change in biology and psychology, but anecdotal evidence seems to indicate that non-social ghouls, or those in isolation, are more prone to the condition. While not necessarily based on peer-reviewed scientific study, Dr. Burroughs leads credence to the theory that isolation and antisocial behaviour can lead to a non-feral ghoul becoming feral. It may be the case that for a particularly hostile ghoul, living in a dark cavern and attacking non-hostiles may lead to their own form of self-fulfilling prophecy. If they're acting like a feral, they'll gradually turn feral. I'd almost compare these ghouls to the Quislings from Max Brooks' World War Z book, humans who lost their minds and began acting like zombies, as although these ghouls clinically may not have had the same neurological brain degeneration as their feral counterparts, they essentially become them. This may also be why some feral ghouls still retain the ability to speak, screaming die, stop you, or even thank you upon their death. That being said, there are hostile non-ferals who retain their faculties and are exceptionally dangerous because of this. Sinjin was a ruthless ghoul leader of a commonwealth gang who commanded enormous fear and respect through strength and violence. In the case of isolation, there are a few examples of ghouls being left incredibly isolated, yet still remaining sound of mind. Billy the Ghoul was stuck in a refrigerator for 200 years, and Eddie Winters voluntarily entombed himself in his own tiny hideaway prior to the outbreak of the Great War. In the case of isolation being the cause of feral transitions, it seems to not be a one-size-fits-all situation. Some ghouls can stay in their own for centuries, while others can simply snap after a very short period of time. The transition of becoming a ghoul itself entails the subject being exposed to an incredibly high amount of radiation. 
As identified by Dr. Barrows, some unknown X factor within certain humans will lead to ghoulification when exposed to radiation that would normally kill others. Since it is the radiation itself that turns a human into a ghoul, it is theorized that further exposure to radiation can accelerate the decline to a feral state in a ghoul. There seems to be evidence both in support of and against the theory, however. The exposure to ionizing radiation itself is said to be what allows the decaying process in a ghoul to slow down. They may look like a corpse, but they're preserved due to the fact that their mutation to radiation sustains them. Normal and feral ghouls enjoy healing effects from radiation, with removed limbs able to be reattached due to the regenerative effects of radiation. The marked men of the divide are kept alive purely because of the incredibly high levels of radiation within the area. Ultimately, both feral and non-feral ghouls actively enjoy radiation, with some describing it as an enjoyable warm feeling. It could therefore be theorized that while minimal or semi-moderate radiation can simply sustain ghouls, severe radiation exposure is what can lead them to become feral. Events such as Camp Searchlight have shown that extreme exposure can rapidly cause the unfortunate subject to degenerate into a feral ghoul, such as the NCR troopers who were seen to be ghoulified to the point of feralization within the week since the event. Ultimately, in regards to radiation, it seems to be the case that it's not the length of exposure to radiation that can cause feralization, but the strength of the exposure. The neurotransmitters that sustain ghoulkine may be able to process low or medium levels of radiation without allowing it to affect their mental state. However, when subjected to an incredibly potent amount, the neurotransmitters may become overloaded, unable to keep up with the demand of processing radiation to the point that it affects the cerebellum of the ghoul. I'd liken this to the liver of a drinker. If they had a shot of vodka once every hour for 10 hours, the liver would be able to metabolize the alcohol. The drinker may still feel some of the effects, but their body would be able to keep up with processing it. However, if the individual was to drink 10 shots in one hour, and the individual would most likely suffer alcohol poisoning. To be honest, town drunks do start to resemble ghouls. This would explain why ghouls that live in communities that are constantly exposed to radiation, such as Gecko and the NCR, do not turn feral. The resident ghouls of Gecko work in the atomic power plant but since they're not exposed to a sudden sharp discharge of radiation, they're able to retain their sanity. Meanwhile, the sudden and explosive leak of their reactor in Vault 34 caused its inhabitants to rapidly turn into ferals due to the severity of the radiation experienced by its inhabitants. Severe radiation is also what leads to the creation of the luminous glowing ones. Feral ghouls who become vessels of radiation and are able to heal their ghoul brethren. The few intelligent glowing ones seen in game, such as Jason Bright and Oswald the Outrageous, are evidently leaders of their groups, seemingly due to their ghoul followers being drawn to the warmth emitted from their radioactive shells. Ultimately, the short and narrow is that exposure to radiation itself does not cause a ghoul to turn feral, but it's dependent on the severity of the exposure. The result of some ghouls not turning feral when exposed to circumstances that typically would turn a ghoul feral may simply be due to writing from Bethesda. However, in order to keep it within in-game lore, we could also argue that it's down to simple genetics. The unknown X factor found within the individuals that become ghouls may have deviations within its own strength. The cells of some ghouls may be less prone than others to continue to be sustained leading to the gradual decline in their mental faculties, no matter the external stimuli. This may be why individuals such as Captain Zhao were able to retain functional intelligent cool status, while the rest of his crew aboard the submarine turned into ferals. This would also explain the case of Oswald the Outrageous, an intelligent glowing one who has become the physical embodiment of radiation, while his entire group of pre-war allies have declined into a feral state. Oswald's group was convinced that there was a cure for the affliction, as they labelled the feral process. When all had turned feral, except for himself and his partner Rachel, they agreed that Rachel would journey into the wasteland to search for a cure. Heartbreakingly, a final holotape can be found recorded by Rachel that documents her transition into a feral state. In it, she describes fighting against her own mind, with feral growls and moans emanating throughout the recording. Ultimately, Rachel chose to end her own life rather than turn feral. Genetics may come into play as some wastelanders view feralization process as a mental illness rather than a physical transformation. Depending on the subject, it might be a combination of both. 
Rachel was already dealing with the effects of turning feral, but she does state within her holotape that the communities she'd spoken to had explained that there was no cure for the process itself, and in their mind, all ghouls simply degenerate into ferals. The mental damage from hearing this information may have accelerated the physical transformation process itself. Rachel was already turning and lost all hope after hearing there was no cure available. It may simply just be that some ghouls are able to retain their intelligence and sanity, while others are genetically predisposed not to. So ultimately, what turns a ghoul feral is not an exact science. The individual's genetic disposition, the severity of radiation exposure, and their own mental state in isolated or antisocial situations can play their own part in determining how, if, or when they turn feral. It may simply be the fact that a combination of all the factors, genetics, isolation, radiation, can play a part. However, it also may be the fact that time is unfortunately the biggest factor of them all. As mentioned previously, the transition to a feral ghoul state for some individuals is almost instantaneous. Others have turned into ghouls but remain perfectly intelligent for more than 200 years. Their exceptionally long lifespan has allowed them to experience near immortality, with Dr. Burrow's studies that their long lifespan is due to the mutation disrupting the normal process of decay in their neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters are regenerated after mutation, slowing the process of decay and aging and sustaining the life of the afflicted. But the key issue is that this does not mean ghouls will never suffer neurological deterioration, only that the process itself has been slowed down to a snail's pace. Despite the fact that there are ghouls that have lived for many centuries, if given enough time, the regenerative ability of their neurological system would eventually fail. It honestly might take a thousand years, and it may be the case that the ghoul never quite goes into a full feral state. It would simply be the case that the cerebellum dissolves to the point that they lose their sense of self and quickly expire after this. So in answer to the question, will all ghouls turn feral eventually? I believe the answer is yes. However, it also could be considered a moot point since the time frame it would take for some ghouls to turn feral on their own would be an exceptionally long time. A ghoul, while physically capable of living for many, many centuries, is unlikely to, given the hostile environment that they find themselves within. Decay is the natural order of things, and it unfortunately seems to be that this is also the case for our ghoul friends.